Chapter 1. Having money allows you to discover hidden talents and have a well-rounded life. To many, poverty is a sign of a righteous and modest life. However, this is an outdated and harmful stereotype that keeps us from having fulfilling and successful lives. We cannot develop our potential and discover the hidden talents each of us possesses unless we have the money to do it. Money also offers freedom of choice. When we don't buy something, it is not because of our lack of resources, but because we made a conscious choice not to. Development is the main goal to pursue in our life. There are three entities that form the basis of our existence. They are the body, the mind, and the soul. None of these three is better than the other. All are desirable, and none of them can live as a complete entity if either of the others is cut short of life and expression. If we live to elevate one at the expense of the other two, we will only suffer in the end. The soul, the mind, and the body all deserve equal attention and nourishment for us to live in a wholesome way. Hearing the word science, we imagine physics, maths, or biology. However, waddles but we learn them. Anyone who does will get rich with mathematical certainty. One of the popular misconceptions is that to become rich or acquire wealth, you need to be saving money by being thrifty. Nevertheless, life itself abounds with examples of quite the opposite. People working hard to save money usually end up poor, while the rich ones are great spenders, and it seems that the more they spend, the richer they get. Getting rich is also not due to doing things that others fail to do. Usually, two people engaged in the same business often work in almost the same way, yet one remains poor or even becomes bankrupt, while the other gets rich. Getting rich is not magic or a matter of luck. It is an exact science working by the laws of its own. At this point, you need to remember that a desire to be rich is entirely normal, and you shouldn't be ashamed of pursuing it. Therefore, anyone who masters it becomes rich. Did you know, your background, environment, or talents don't define your ability to make money. Chapter 2. Our thought creates things from the living original substance. We often blame our inability to get rich on others. We think that they have monopolized wealth, and thus there is not much left for us to acquire. The truth is that some areas of business are indeed hard to get into, but not all of them. Moreover, there are plenty of other channels through which one can get rich, and these channels are always open to us. There are objective factors that influence how much of a shot we have at a certain undertaking, a particular stage of social evolution, violent conflicts, overall economic collapse, etc. However, even in times like these, there are still many opportunities for the one who chooses to go with the flow of the latest trends, or even predict what they are likely to be, rather than swim against the tide. The original substance is formless, and we make things happen with the power of thought. The original substance moves according to the feelings, thoughts, forms, and processes you see in nature. It is the visible expression of an idea in its purest form. As soon as the substance that has no form starts thinking of a form, it will take that form. The same is true about motion, as thought is what makes this motion happen. All things were, are, and will be created this way. It might sound far-fetched, giving the impression of some unjustified mysticism. Let's consider the thesis mentioned above in more detail. Our universe is the original substance that took form due to the power of thinking. The thinking subject is each of us. Now, if you think of a car, the vehicle will not materialize in front of you in an instant. However, the original substance's creative energy will start working in the direction of bringing that car to you. As you imagine and start thinking about it intentionally, the universe will begin to help you out by letting you earn more money or find the best and affordable deal on your dream. Our thoughts create the reality we live in. Therefore, for something to exist, we first need to imagine and mold it. For starters, stop shuffling off the responsibility for your life on others. It would also help if you drop the belief that there is a deity who wants to keep you poor and powerless. Your thought is compelling, so use it to change your life and wish for different things. Do not be afraid to wish big, but do it gradually, as you need to see for yourself that your thoughts have the potential to bring you riches. Did you know, natural resources will never get exhausted, but we need to use them wisely. Chapter 3. Create a mental picture of what you want. Having a general desire for wealth is not enough. Everybody has that desire. It is also not enough that you have a wish to travel, see things, live more, etc. In order to make things happen, you need to be as specific as possible with the things you wish for. Learn to formulate in detail what you want. Picture what it might look, smell, and feel like. Making our dreams come true, we always depart from the general idea of what we want. A lot of people stop there, not daring to take it further. Often that happens because we don't know how to realize our desires. Wallace Waddles suggests that the more elaborate our dream is, the faster it will become a reality. We should attempt to be definite and specific, avoiding vagueness by all means. Go over your wants and desires. See just what you want. Then create a clear mental picture of it. Constantly keep in mind that vivid image as your goal the same way an archer would keep their eyes on the target. In order to do that, you don't have to take concentration exercises or pray for it to happen. These things are beneficial, but they are not the priority for achieving your goals. All you need is to know what you want and to want it intensely enough so that it will stay in your thoughts. Unless you really want to get rich so that the desire is strong enough to hold your thoughts directed to the purpose as the magnetic pole holds the needle of the compass, it will hardly be worthwhile for you to try to carry out the instructions given in this book. Wallace D. Waddles Allot as much of your free time as possible to detailing your mental picture. 
The trick is that, with time, you will realize that thinking about something you want doesn't take that much time, energy, and effort. It is stuff you don't care about that absorbs most of your resources. By the way, you could track the things you fix too much attention upon, but which don't contribute to achieving your goal, and start getting rid of them. Did you know, every wish is the effort of an unexpressed possibility coming into action. Chapter 4. To get rich, you need to use your willpower on yourself only. Compelling people to act against their will both mentally and physically is wrong. When you apply your physical force to make people do what you want, you reduce them to slavery. As you try to influence them mentally, the results will be the same. The only thing that differs is the method or the how. However, the principle is the same. Obtaining something from people by exerting your mental and physical power is apparent robbery. Even if you only wish for another person's good, you have no right to exercise your physical or mental power over that person. One common mistake many of us make is trying to force the universe to make our dreams come true through our willpower. This endeavor is childish and wrong in its premise. The metaphor Waddles uses is for a person who attempts to trigger rain through their willpower or cajole God into realizing our wishes. You do not have to use your strong will to conquer a stubborn deity or to make unfriendly and rebellious forces do your bidding. The original substance is friendly and accessible to you. Only when you know what to think and which actions to take should you use your willpower to do the right things. That is the right and legitimate use of the will in getting what you want. To use it in directing yourself to the right course, you can use your strong will to keep yourself thinking and acting in a certain way. Do not try to forcefully project your will, thoughts, or mind out into space to influence things or people. Always keep your mind where it belongs, within you. There, it can accomplish more than elsewhere. Use your mind to form a clear mental image of what you want and hold that vision with faith, courage, and purpose. And use your strong will to keep your mind working the way it should. The more consistent your faith and purpose, the faster you will become rich because you will make many positive impressions upon the original substance. You will not offset or sabotage them by negative beliefs. If you want good things to happen, why wish for the worst? Did you know, suppose you engage in talking, investigating, or reflecting upon the nature of poverty. In that case, your mind will project this picture upon the original substance, and thus, you will hardly ever get rich. Never mind the causes. Look for the cure. Chapter 5. By thought, the things you desire are brought to you. By action, you receive them. The thought is the creative power, push, or force, which causes the creative ability to manifest itself. Having specific thoughts will bring riches to you. However, you must not rely solely upon thought, paying attention to personal action and development. The failure to connect thought with individual effort is the point many of us miss. Your wallet is not going to always be full of money without your putting in effort. At this crucial point in the science of getting rich, you need to put thought and individual action together. There are people who, intentionally or not, set the creative forces of the original substance in motion by the persistence of their desires. However, they still remain poor because they never prepare for their wishes to take proper shape. As you have devised your thought, it is time to take action. Now you can act neither in the past nor in the future. The former is already gone, whereas the latter is not here yet. Therefore, they are both non-existent. You can act only in the present because that is the only temporal reality available to you in the given space. Act now, not casting your thoughts in the future. It is the golden rule. Even if your surroundings are not quite right at the moment, it doesn't mean that they never will be. Stay focused on the present. That is where you are strongest. Otherwise, you will end up much weaker with a divided mind. Once you have sent a creative impulse to the original substance, start acting upon it. You will never obtain any results if you just sit back and wait. Now is the only time you have at your disposal. If you are to prepare for what you want, you must begin now. Chapter 6. To succeed in a business, you need to have the qualities it requires. Whether you want to be a ballroom dancer, TV host, or run a gardening business, you will need the qualities and facilities required by the specific sphere. We are all aware of that. In the same vein, no one can succeed in mercantile pursuits without tact and commercial knowledge and skills. If you have a well-developed faculty or equipment required in your particular vocation, it does not mean you will get rich. A man's way of doing things is the direct result of the way he thinks about things. Wallace D. Waddles The distinct qualities, skills, and faculties are only tools. We are the ones that can make these devices work in the right way. For instance, one person can take a saw, a good plane, some nails, and so on and build an excellent piece of furniture. Another person will take the same tools and set to duplicate the item, but their production will be a disaster. This means that they do not know how to use good tools successfully. Your mind's various sessions and faculties are the tools and means to carry out the needed work to make you rich. It will be easy to succeed and profit if you are in the right business and well-equipped with mental tools. You will do best in that business, which will use your most vital faculties, the one which you are naturally best suited. Some of you might find it surprising, but we all can succeed in any business. Even if we don't have the right talent for it, we can develop it and nail the sphere. To make that happen, you will need to learn to use new tools as you progress through life and not concentrate on just those you were born with. You can gain wealth quickly if you put in the right effort. If you do the business, you are best fitted. 
You must do what you want to do. Putting your efforts into what your heart desires are life. And there's no real satisfaction in living if you're compelled to be forever doing something you do not like to do. It is, of course, inevitable that you can do what you want to do. The desire to do it is enough proof to certainty that you have the power to do it within you. Conclusion Getting rich is an exact science, as it follows cause and effect logic and operates by functional laws. To begin with, we need to understand that everything in the world is made from the original substance. This substance is eternal, yet formless. It is our thought that makes it take shape and produces the world of visible phenomena. Therefore, when we think of things, when we imagine, we shouldn't concentrate on the negative stuff, as it may well become our inevitable reality. Having realized the immense power of thought, we probably assume the amount of responsibility that comes with it. Many that have are afraid to take, and thus their dreams and aspirations never become reality, smoldering somewhere at the back of their mind. These people choose to blame the external world, God, bad economy, and so on, for their failed strivings. Taking the responsibility for what you want is hard, but it repays a thousandfold. There's nothing wrong with wishing to be rich because money is the energy that fuels us in the pursuit of happiness. Anyone can be rich. First, we need to imagine in the slightest detail what it entails for you. Then, as your mental picture is ready, go ahead and start implementing it, step by step, detail by detail, just like you have envisaged. Take action and work it towards your goal. Try this. Mind your speech. Do not speak of yourself, your affairs, or anything concerning yourself in a discouraged or discouraging way. Do not admit the possibility of failure or speak in a way that connotes loss as a possibility. Never speak of the times as being hard or of business conditions as being worrisome. Shape your reality by the words you use. You don't need to embellish, just don't concentrate on the unpleasant and negative things.